Electronic Cigarette, Wikipedia Audio An electronic cigarette or e-cigarette is a handheld electronic device that simulates the feeling of tobacco smoking. It works by heating a liquid to generate an aerosol, commonly called a vapor, that the user inhales. Using e-cigarettes is sometimes called vaping. The liquid in the e-cigarette, called e-liquid, is usually made of nicotine, propylene glycol, glycerin, and flavorings. Not all e-liquids contain nicotine. The health risks of e-cigarettes are uncertain. They are likely safer than tobacco cigarettes but are of unclear effect in relation to other methods of stopping smoking. Their long-term health effects are not known. They may help some smokers quit. When used by non-smokers, e-cigarettes can lead to nicotine addiction, and there is concern that children could start smoking after using e-cigarettes. So far, no serious adverse effects have been reported in trials. Less serious adverse effects include throat and mouth irritation, vomiting, nausea, and coughing. E-cigarettes create an aerosol, commonly called vapor. Its exact composition varies. The majority of toxic chemicals found in tobacco smoke are absent in e-cigarette aerosol. Those present are mostly below 1% corresponding levels in tobacco smoke. The aerosol can contain toxicants and traces of heavy metals at levels permissible in inhalation medicines, and potentially harmful chemicals not found in tobacco smoke at concentrations permissible by workplace safety standards. However, chemical concentrations may exceed the stricter public safety limits. Terminology The modern e-cigarette was invented in 2003 by Chinese pharmacist Han Like, and as of 2015 most e-cigarettes are made in China. Since they were first sold in 2004 their global use has risen exponentially. In the United States and the United Kingdom their use is widespread. Reasons for using e-cigarettes involve trying to quit smoking, reduce risk, or save money, though many use them recreationally. A majority of users still smoke tobacco, causing concerns that dual use may delay or deter quitting. About 60% of UK users are smokers and roughly 40% are ex-smokers. In the UK use among never-smokers was negligible. Because of overlap with tobacco laws and medical drug policies, e-cigarette legislation is debated in many countries. A European Directive of 2016 set standards for liquids, vaporizers, ingredients, and child-proof liquid containers. As of August 2016, the US FDA extended its regulatory power to include e-cigarettes. There are around 500 brands of e-cigarette, with global sales in excess of 7 billion US dollars. Electronic cigarettes are also known as e-cigarettes, e-cigs, e-c, electronic nicotine delivery systems or electronic non-nicotine delivery systems, personal vaporizers, or PVS. They are handheld devices, often made to look like conventional cigarettes, and used in a similar way. E-liquid or juice are names for the flavored solution that goes inside the e-cigarette. An aerosol, or vapor, is produced by heating the e-liquid. Irish public health discussions refer to NMNDS. Recreational use, to cut down or quit smoking because they believe vaping is healthier than smoking, to circumvent smoke-free laws and policies, because e-cigarettes are odor-free, or, because in some jurisdictions, they are cheaper. Between their introduction to the market in 2004 and approximately 2015, global usage of e-cigarettes rose exponentially. 
By 2013, there were several million users globally. Awareness and use of e-cigarettes greatly increased in a relatively short period of time. Growth rates in the US and UK slowed in 2015, although use is still increasing. Most users have a history of smoking regular cigarettes. At least 52% of smokers or ex-smokers have vaped. Of smokers who have, less than 15% became everyday e-cigarette users. Though e-cigarette use among those who have never smoked is very low, it continues to rise. A survey of e-cigarette users conducted from 2011-2012 found that only 1% of respondents used liquid without nicotine. Everyday use is common among e-cigarette users. Vapers mostly keep smoking, although many say vaping helps them cut down or quit smoking. Many e-cigarette users are middle-aged men who also smoke traditional cigarettes, either to help them quit or for recreational use. E-cigarette use is also rising among women. In the US, as of 2014, 12.6% of adults had used an e-cigarette at least once and approximately 3.7% were still using them. 1.1% of adults were daily users. Non-smokers and former smokers who had quit more than four years earlier were extremely unlikely to be current users. Former smokers who had recently quit were more than four times as likely to be daily users as current smokers. Experimentation was more common among younger adults, but daily users were more likely to be older adults. In the UK, there were about 2.6 million users in 2015 which is about 18% of current smokers and about 5% of the population. 59% of current smokers said they had tried them. Among those who had never smoked, 1.1% said they had tried them and 0.2% still use them. In France in 2014, between 7.7 .7 and 9.2 million people have tried e-cigarettes and 1.1 to 1.9 million use them on a daily basis. 67% of French smokers use e-cigarettes to reduce or quit smoking. Of French people who have tried e-cigarettes, 9% have never smoked tobacco. Of the 1.2% who had recently stopped tobacco smoking at the time of the survey, 84% credited e-cigarettes as essential in quitting. E-cigarette users report several reasons for use. Use Marketing aimed at smokers focuses on these motivations. This marketing does influence people to try them. When users were asked why they had first tried e-cigarettes, reasons given were curiosity or experimentation, because a relative was using them, or because they were given or offered one. Some researchers are concerned about vaping during pregnancy. Some users have stopped vaping due to issues with the devices. Dissatisfaction and concerns over safety can also discourage ongoing e-cigarette use. Users may begin by trying a disposable e-cigarette. They often start with e-cigarettes resembling normal cigarettes, subsequently moving to a later generation device. Most later generation e-cigarette users shifted to their present device to get a more satisfying hit and users may adjust their devices to provide more vapor for better throat hits. Although smoking among young people has declined over the last five years, this has coincided with a growth in the use of alternative nicotine products. Overall frequency of vaping in minors is low. However, among school children, e-cigarette use surpasses the use of any other nicotine product. Some young people who have tried an e-cigarette have never smoked tobacco, 
so vaping can be a starting point for nicotine use. The evidence on whether e-cigarettes are a gateway to tobacco smoking in later life is mixed and contradictory. In the UK, Public Health England say there is no evidence that e-cigarettes increase teen tobacco smoking, and tentative evidence that e-cigarettes divert young people away from cigarettes, but in the US, researchers say use by young people correlates with increased desire to smoke tobacco, and that teenagers who have used an e-cigarette are more inclined to become smokers than those who had not. Frequency Motivation Most young people who vape also smoke. Most say that when they vape, they use liquid without nicotine. Motivation for use by minors is not likely to be associated with quitting smoking. It is more likely to be sensation seeking or symbolic of rebellion. Progression Children Other uses Construction Design Some researchers and anti-tobacco advocates are concerned that irresponsible marketing could make e-cigarettes appeal to young people. There is also a risk that infants or toddlers could ingest the e-liquid from an improperly stored device. The emergence of e-cigarettes has given cannabis smokers a new method of inhaling cannabinoids. E-cigarettes, also known as vape pens, cartridges, and pens, differ from traditional marijuana cigarettes in several respects. It is assumed that vaporizing cannabinoids at lower temperatures is safer because it produces smaller amounts of toxic substances than the hot combustion of a marijuana cigarette. Recreational cannabis users can discreetly vape deodorized cannabis extracts with minimal annoyance to the people around them and less chance of detection, known as stealth vaping. While cannabis is not readily soluble in the liquid used for e-cigs, recipes containing synthetic cannabinoids which are soluble may be found on the internet. E-cigarettes may be used with other substances and cartridges can potentially be filled with e-liquid containing substances other than nicotine, thus serving as a new way to deliver other psychoactive drugs, for example THC. E-liquid Cannabinoid-enriched e-liquids require lengthy, complex processing. Some are available on the internet despite lack of quality control expiry date, conditions of preservation, or any toxicological and clinical assessment. The health consequences of vaping cannabis preparations are largely unknown. The main components of an e-cigarette are a mouthpiece, a cartridge, a heating element slash atomizer, a microprocessor, a battery, and possibly an LED light on the end. The only exception to this are mechanical e-cigarettes which contain no electronics, the circuit is closed by a mechanical action switch. An atomizer comprises a small heating element, or coil, that vaporizes e-liquid and wicking material that draws liquid onto the coil. When the user pushes a button, or activates a pressure sensor by inhaling, the heating element atomizes the liquid solution. The e-liquid reaches a temperature of roughly 100 to 250 degrees Celsius within a chamber to create an aerosolized vapor, which the user then inhales, rather than cigarette smoke. The aerosol provides a flavor and feel similar to tobacco smoking. There are three main types of e-cigarettes, seagalikes, looking like cigarettes, egos bigger than seagalikes with refillable liquid tanks, and mods, assembled from basic parts or by altering existing products. As the e-cigarette industry continues to evolve, new products are quickly developed and brought to market. First-generation e-cigarettes tend to look like tobacco cigarettes and so are called seagalikes. Most seagalikes look like cigarettes but there is some variation in size. 
A traditional cigarette is smooth and light while a Seagalike is rigid and slightly heavier. Second generation devices are larger overall and look less like tobacco cigarettes. Third generation devices include mechanical mods and variable voltage devices. The fourth generation includes sub-ohm tanks and temperature control devices. The power source is the biggest component of an e-cigarette, which is frequently a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. E-liquid is the mixture used in vapor products such as e-cigarettes and generally consists of propylene glycol, glycerin, water, nicotine, and flavorings. While the ingredients vary the liquid typically contains 95% propylene glycol and glycerin. There are many e-liquids manufacturers in the USA and worldwide, and upwards of 8,000 flavors. Industry standards have been created and published by the American E-Liquid Manufacturing Standards Association. As of August 8, 2016, the FDA extended its regulatory power to include e-cigarettes, e-liquid and all related products. Under this ruling the FDA will evaluate certain issues, including ingredients, product features, and health risks as well their appeal to minors and non-users. The FDA rule also bans access to minors. A photo ID is now required to buy e-cigarettes, and their sale in all ages vending machines is not permitted. As of August 2017, regulatory compliance deadlines relating to pre-market review requirements for most e-cigarette and e-liquid products have been extended from November 2017 to 2022. Smokers will get the maximum health benefit if they completely quit all nicotine use. The second best option for smokers is to switch to approved, regulated nicotine replacement therapy. According to some medical organizations, particularly British ones, e-cigarettes are a reasonable third best alternative for those who smoke, are unable to quit, and unwilling to switch to conventional NRT. Other medical organizations, primarily in the US, feel there is insufficient evidence to recommend this. The available research on e-cigarette use for smoking cessation is limited to three randomized controlled trials and some user surveys, case reports, and cohort studies. The most recent Cochrane review concludes, with low confidence, that there is evidence that electronic cigarettes can help smokers quit in the long term compared to placebos but studies pertaining to their potential impact on smoking cessation and reduction are very limited. Health Effects Some medical authorities recommend that e-cigarettes have a role in smoking cessation, and others disagree. On the one hand, Public Health England recommends that stop smoking practitioners should advise people who want to quit to try e-cigarettes if they are failing with conventional nicotine replacement therapy, and advise people who cannot or do not want to quit to switch to e-cigarettes. On the other hand, the United States Preventive Services Task Force advised only use of conventional NRT products in smoking cessation and found insufficient evidence to recommend e-cigarettes for this purpose. A 2016 meta-analysis based on 20 different studies found that smokers who vaped were 28% less likely to quit than those who had not tried electronic cigarettes. This finding persisted whether the smokers were initially interested in quitting or not. A 2015 meta-analysis on clinical trials found that nicotine-containing e-liquids are more effective than nicotine-free ones for quitting smoking. They compared their finding that nicotine-containing e-cigarettes helped 20% of people quit with the results from other studies that found conventional NRT helps 10% of people quit. There has only been one study directly comparing first-generation e-cigarettes to conventional NRT as smoking cessation tools, 
so the comparative effectiveness is not known. Two 2016 reviews found a trend towards benefit of e-cigarettes with nicotine for smoking cessation, but the evidence was of low quality. Another 2016 review found that the combined abstinence rate among smokers using e-cigarettes in prospective studies was 29.1%. The same review noted that few clinical trials had yet been conducted on their effectiveness, and only one had included a group using other cessation methods. Positions of Medical Organizations In the USA, e-cigarettes have not been subject to the same efficacy testing as nicotine replacement products. Several authorities, including the World Health Organization, feel there is not enough evidence to recommend e-cigarettes for quitting smoking, and there are studies showing a decline in smoking cessation among dual users. A 2014 review found that e-cigarettes do not seem to improve cessation rates compared to regulated nicotine replacement products, and a trial found 29% of e-cigarette users were still vaping at six months but only 8% of patch users still wore patches at 6 months. There is low-quality evidence that vaping assists smokers to quit smoking in the long term compared with nicotine-free vaping. Nicotine-containing e-cigarettes were associated with greater effectiveness for quitting smoking than e-cigarettes without nicotine. E-cigarettes without nicotine may reduce tobacco cravings because of the smoking-related physical stimuli. Tobacco harm reduction is replacing tobacco cigarettes with lower-risk products to reduce death and disease. E-cigarettes can reduce smokers' exposure to carcinogens and other toxic substances found in tobacco, and are very likely less harmful than tobacco cigarettes. This is a motivation for many e-cigarette users. Smoking cessation Harm reduction Safety Hazards associated with products currently on the market are certainly much lower than smoking. However, harms could be reduced further through appropriate product standards. The British Medical Association encourages health professionals to recommend conventional nicotine replacement therapies, but for patients unwilling to use or continue using such methods, health professionals may present e-cigarettes as a lower risk option than tobacco smoking. The American Association of Public Health Physicians suggests those who are unwilling to quit tobacco smoking or unable to quit with medical advice and pharmaceutical methods should consider other nicotine-containing products such as electronic cigarettes and smokeless tobacco for long-term use instead of smoking. Tobacco smoke contains 100 known carcinogens, and 900 potentially cancer-causing chemicals none of which has been found in more than trace quantities in e-cigarette vapor. A core concern is that smokers who could have quit completely will develop an alternative nicotine addiction instead. A 2014 review stated that promotion of vaping as a harm reduction aid is premature, but they could help to lower tobacco-related death and disease if examined more thoroughly. Another review found that compared with cigarettes, e-cigarettes are likely to be much less, if at all, harmful to users or bystanders. The authors warned against the potential harm of excessive regulation and advised health professionals to consider advising smokers who are reluctant to quit by other methods to switch to e-cigarettes as a safer alternative to smoking. A 2015 Public Health England report concluded that e-cigarette use releases negligible levels of nicotine into ambient air with no identified health risks to bystanders. A 2014 review recommended that regulations for e-cigarettes could be similar to those for dietary supplements or cosmetic products to not limit their potential for harm reduction.
a 2012 review found e-cigarettes could considerably reduce traditional cigarettes use and they likely could be used as a lower risk replacement for traditional cigarettes, but there is not enough data on their safety and efficacy to draw definite conclusions. In an interview, the director of the Office on Smoking and Health for the U.S. Federal Agency Centers for Disease Control and Prevention believes that there is enough evidence to say that using e-cigarettes is likely less harmful than smoking conventional cigarettes. However, due to the lack of regulation of the contents of e-cigarettes and the presence of nicotine, the CDC has issued warnings. A 2014 WHO report concluded that some smokers will switch completely to e-cigarettes from traditional tobacco but a sizable number will use both. This report found that such dual use of e-cigarettes and tobacco will have much smaller beneficial effects on overall survival compared with quitting smoking completely. The safety of electronic cigarettes is uncertain. However, they are likely substantially safer than tobacco cigarettes, since there is no ash, tar, carbon, and carbon monoxide entering inhalers' lungs. There is considerable variation between vaporizers and in quality of their liquid ingredients and thus the contents of the vapor. Reviews on the safety of electronic cigarettes, analyzing almost the same studies, resulted in substantially different conclusions. In July 2014 the World Health Organization report cautioned about potential risks of using e-cigarettes. Regulated U.S. Food and Drug Administration products such as nicotine inhalers are probably safer than e-cigarettes. In 2015, Public Health England stated that e-cigarettes are estimated to be 95% less harmful than smoking. A 2014 systematic review concluded that the risks of e-cigarettes have been exaggerated by health authorities and stated that while there may be some remaining risk, the risk of e-cigarette use is likely small compared to smoking tobacco. The long-term effects of e-cigarette use are unknown. Improvements in lung function and pulmonary health have been demonstrated among smokers who have switched to e-cigarettes. A 2014 Cochrane review found no serious adverse effects reported in clinical trials. Less serious adverse effects from e-cigarette use include throat and mouth irritation, vomiting, nausea, and cough. The evidence suggests they produce less harmful effects than tobacco. A 2014 WHO report said, ENDS use poses serious threats to adolescents and fetuses. Aside from toxicity, there are also risks from misuse or accidents such as contact with liquid nicotine, fires caused by vaporizer malfunction, and explosions as result from extended charging unsuitable chargers, or design flaws. Battery explosions are caused by an increase in internal battery temperature and some have resulted in severe skin burns. There is a small risk of battery explosion in devices modified to increase battery power. The e-liquid has a low level of toxicity, but contamination with various chemicals has been found. The majority of toxic chemicals found in tobacco smoke are absent in e-cigarette vapor. Those which are present are mostly below 1% of the corresponding levels in tobacco smoke, and far below safety limits for occupational exposure. Metal parts of e-cigarettes in contact with the e-liquid can contaminate it with metals. Normal usage of e-cigarettes generates very low levels of formaldehyde. Later generation e-cigarettes can generate high levels of formaldehyde, but only when they thermally degrade under conditions that bear very little resemblance to how the devices are actually used. Users detect the dry puff and avoid it, and the report concluded that there is no indication that EC users are exposed to dangerous levels of aldehydes.
E-cigarette users who use e-cigarettes that contain nicotine are exposed to its potentially harmful effects. Nicotine is associated with cardiovascular disease, potential birth defects, and poisoning. In vitro studies of nicotine have associated it with cancer, but carcinogenicity has not been demonstrated in vivo. There is inadequate research to demonstrate that nicotine is associated with cancer in humans. The risk is probably low from the inhalation of propylene glycol and glycerin. No information is available on the long-term effects of the inhalation of flavors. Most of the cardiovascular effects of ECS are consistent with those of nicotine. According to a 2017 review, it is possible that ECS may have adverse cardiovascular effects on users, especially those who already have cardiovascular disease. However, this review also concluded that the risk is thought to be less than that of cigarette smoking based on qualitative and quantitative comparisons of EC aerosol versus cigarette smoke constituents. E-cigarettes create vapor that consists of ultra-fine particles, with the majority of particles in the ultra-fine range. The vapor has been found to contain flavors, propylene glycol, glycerin, nicotine, tiny amounts of toxicants, carcinogens, heavy metals and metal nanoparticles, and other chemicals. Exactly what comprises the vapor varies in composition and concentration across and within manufacturers. However, e-cigarettes cannot be regarded as simply harmless. There is a concern that some of the mainstream vapor exhaled by e-cigarette users can be inhaled by bystanders, particularly indoors. E-cigarette use by a parent might lead to inadvertent health risks to offspring. A 2014 review recommended that e-cigarettes should be regulated for consumer safety. There is limited information available on the environmental issues around production, use, and disposal of e-cigarettes that use cartridges. The World Health Organization's view regarding second-hand aerosol is that while there are a limited number of studies in this area, it can be concluded that SHA is a new air contamination source for particulate matter, which includes fine and ultra-fine particles, as well as 1,2 propane diol, some vox, some heavy metals, and nicotine, and T is nevertheless reasonable to assume that the increased concentration of toxicants from SHA over background levels poses an increased risk for the health of all bystanders. Public Health England has concluded that international peer-reviewed evidence indicates that the risk to the health of bystanders from second-hand e-cigarette vapor is extremely low and insufficient to justify prohibiting e-cigarettes. A systematic review concluded, the absolute impact from passive exposure to EC vapor has the potential to lead to adverse health effects. The risk from being passively exposed to EC vapor is likely to be less than the risk from passive exposure to conventional cigarette smoke. Nicotine, a key ingredient in e-liquids, is a highly addictive substance, on a level comparable to heroin and cocaine. Nicotine stimulates regions of the cortex associated with reward, pleasure, and reducing anxiety. When nicotine intake stops, withdrawal symptoms include cravings for nicotine, anger-slash-irritability, anxiety, depression, impatience, trouble sleeping, restlessness, hunger or weight gain, and difficulty concentrating. It is not clear whether e-cigarette use will decrease or increase overall nicotine addiction, but the nicotine content in e-cigarettes is adequate to cause or sustain nicotine dependence. The World Health Organization is concerned about addiction for non-smokers, and the National Institute on Drug Abuse said e-cigarettes could maintain nicotine addiction in those who are attempting to quit.
the limited available data suggests that the likelihood of abuse from e-cigarettes is smaller than traditional cigarettes. A 2014 systematic review found that the concerns that e-cigarettes could lead non-smokers to start smoking are unsubstantiated. No long-term studies have been done on the effectiveness of e-cigarettes in treating tobacco addiction, but some evidence suggests that dual use of e-cigarettes and traditional cigarettes may be associated with greater nicotine dependence. Smoking a traditional cigarette yields between 0.5 and 1.5 mg of nicotine but the nicotine content of the cigarette is only weakly correlated with the levels of nicotine in the smoker's bloodstream. The amount of nicotine in the e-cigarette aerosol varies widely either from puff to puff or among products of the same company. In practice e-cigarette users tend to reach lower blood nicotine concentrations than smokers particularly when the users are inexperienced or using earlier generation devices. Nicotine in tobacco smoke is absorbed into the bloodstream rapidly, and e-cigarette vapor is relatively slow in this regard. The concentration of nicotine in e-liquid ranges up to 36 mg ml. New EU regulations cap this at a maximum of 2%, but this is an arbitrary ceiling based on limited data. In practice the nicotine concentration in an e-liquid is not a reliable guide to the amount of nicotine that reaches the bloodstream. The earliest e-cigarette can be traced to Herbert A. Gilbert, who in 1963 patented a smokeless non-tobacco cigarette that involved replacing burning tobacco and paper with heated, moist, flavored air. This device produced flavored steam without nicotine. The patent was granted in 1965. Gilbert's invention was ahead of its time. There were prototypes, but it received little attention and was never commercialized because smoking was still fashionable at that time. Gilbert said in 2013 that today's electric cigarettes follow the basic design set forth in his original patent. Han Like a Chinese pharmacist and inventor who worked as a research pharmacist for a company producing ginseng products, is credited with the invention of the modern e-cigarette. Like quit smoking after his father, also a heavy smoker, died of lung cancer. In 2001, he thought of using a high-frequency, piezoelectric ultrasound emitting element to vaporize a pressurized jet of liquid containing nicotine. This design creates a smoke-like vapor. Like said that using resistance heating obtained better results and the difficulty was to scale down the device to a small enough size. Like's invention was intended to be an alternative to smoking. Han Like registered a patent for the modern e-cigarette design in 2003. The e-cigarette was first introduced to the Chinese domestic market in 2004. Many versions made their way to the US, sold mostly over the internet by small marketing firms. E-cigarettes entered the European market and the US market in 2006 and 2007. The company that Like worked for, Golden Dragon Holdings, registered an international patent in November 2007. The company changed its name to Ruin later the same month and started exporting its products. Many US and Chinese e-cig makers copied his designs illegally, so Like has not received much financial reward for his invention. Ruin later changed its company name to Dragonite International Limited. Most e-cigarettes today use a battery-powered heating element rather than the earlier ultrasonic technology design. When e-cigarettes entered the international market, some users were dissatisfied with their performance, and the e-cigarette continued to evolve from the first-generation three-part device. In 2007 British entrepreneurs Umar and Tarek Sheikh invented the Cartomizer. 
This is a mechanism that integrates the heating coil into the liquid chamber. They launched this new device in the UK in 2008 under their Gamachi brand, and the design is now widely adopted by most Siegel-like brands. Other users tinkered with various parts to produce more satisfactory homemade devices, and the hobby of modding was born. The first mod to replace the e-cigarettes case to accommodate a longer-lasting battery, dubbed the screwdriver, was developed by Ted and Matt Rogers in 2008. Other enthusiasts built their own mods to improve functionality or aesthetics. When pictures of mods appeared at online vapping forums many people wanted them, so some mod makers produced more for sale. The demand for customizable e-cigarettes prompted some manufacturers to produce devices with interchangeable components that could be selected by the user. In 2009, Joytech developed the Ego series which offered the power of the screwdriver model and a user-activated switch to a wide market. The Clear Romizer was invented in 2009. Originating from the Cartomizer design, it contained the wicking material, an e-liquid chamber, and an atomizer coil within a single clear component. The clear romizer allows the user to monitor the liquid level in the device. Soon after the clear romizer reached the market, replaceable atomizer coils and variable voltage batteries were introduced. Clear Romizers and Ego batteries became the best-selling customizable e-cigarette components in early 2012. International tobacco companies dismissed e-cigarettes as a fad at first. However, recognizing the development of a potential new market sector that could render traditional tobacco products obsolete, they began to produce and market their own brands of e-cigarettes and acquire existing e-cigarette companies. Blue e-cigs, a prominent U.S. e-cigarette manufacturer, was acquired by Larillard Incorporated in 2012. British American Tobacco was the first tobacco business to sell e-cigarettes in the U.K. They launched Vipe in 2013 while Imperial Tobacco S. Fontam Ventures acquired the intellectual property owned by Han like through Dragonite International Limited for US$75 million in 2013 and launched Puritan in partnership with Boots UK. On October 1, 2013 Larillard Incorporated acquired another e-cigarette company, this time the UK-based company Skysig. Sky was rebranded as Blue. On February 3, 2014, Altria Group, Inc. acquired popular electronic cigarette brand Green Smoke for $110 million. The deal was finalized in April 2014 for $110 million with $20 million in incentive payments. Altria also markets its own e cigarette the Mark 10, while Reynolds American has entered the sector with its VIS product. Philip Morris, the world's largest tobacco firm, purchased UK's Nico Sigs in June 2014. On April 30, 2015, Japan Tobacco bought the US Logic e-cigarette brand. Japan Tobacco also bought the UK E-Lights brand in June 2014. On July 15, 2014, Larillard sold Blue to Imperial Tobacco as part of a deal for $7.1 billion. In 2014, dollar sales of customizable e-cigarettes and e-liquid surpassed sales of Seagalikes in the US despite the fact that customizables are less expensive. Consumers of e-cigarettes, sometimes called vapors, have shown passionate support for e-cigarettes that other nicotine replacement therapies did not receive. This suggests e-cigarettes have potential mass appeal that could challenge combustible tobacco's market position.
a subculture of vapors has emerged. Members of this emerging subculture often see e-cigarettes as a safer alternative to smoking, and some view it as a hobby. The online forum Electronic Cigarette Forum was one of the first major communities. It and other online forums, such as UKVapor.org, were the origins of the hobby of modding. There are also groups on Facebook and Reddit. Online forums based around modding have grown in the vapping community. Vapers energetically embrace activities associated with e-cigarettes and sometimes act as unpaid evangelists according to a 2014 review. A 2014 postgraduate medical journal editorial stated that e-cigarette companies have a substantial online presence as well as many individual vapers who blog and tweet about e-cigarette-related products. The editorial stated that vapers also engage in grossly offensive online attacks on anyone who has the temerity to suggest that ends are anything other than an innovation that can save thousands of lives with no risks. A 2014 review stated that tobacco and e-cigarette companies interact with consumers for their policy agenda. The companies use websites, social media, and marketing to get consumers involved in opposing bills that include e-cigarettes and smoke-free laws. The same review said this is similar to tobacco industry activity going back to the 1980s. These approaches were used in Europe to minimize the EU Tobacco Product Directive in October 2013. True grassroots lobbying also influenced the TPD decision. Rebecca Taylor, a member of the European Parliament, stated, to say it's an orchestrated campaign is absolute rubbish. Contempt for big tobacco is part of vapping culture. Large gatherings of vapors, called vapi meets, take place around the U.S. They focus on e-cig devices, accessories, and the lifestyle that accompanies them. Vapi Fest, which started in 2010, is an annual show hosted by different cities. People attending these meetings are usually enthusiasts that use specialized, community-made products not found in convenience stores or gas stations. These products are mostly available online or in dedicated VAPI storefronts where mainstream e-cigarettes brands from the tobacco industry and larger e-cig manufacturers are not as popular. Some VAPI shops have a VAPI bar where patrons can test out different e-liquids and socialize. The Electronic Cigarette Convention in North America which started in 2013, is an annual show where companies and consumers meet up. A subclass of vapors configure their atomizers to produce large amounts of vapor by using low-resistance heating coils. This practice is called cloud chasing by using a coil with very low resistance, the batteries are stressed to a potentially unsafe extent. This could present a risk of dangerous battery failures. As vapping comes under increased scrutiny, some members of the vapping community have voiced their concerns about cloud chasing, claiming the practice gives vapors a bad reputation when doing it in public. The Oxford Dictionary's word of the year for 2014 was vapi. Regulation of e-cigarettes varies across countries and states ranging from no regulation to banning them entirely. Others have introduced strict restrictions and some have licensed devices as medicines such as in the UK. As of 2015, around two-thirds of major nations have regulated e-cigarettes in some way. Because of the potential relationship with tobacco laws and medical drug policies, E-cigarette legislation is being debated in many countries. The companies that make e-cigarettes have been pushing for laws that support their interests. In 2016 the U.S. Department of Transportation banned the use of e-cigarettes on commercial flights. 
This regulation applies to all flights to and from the U.S. The legal status of e-cigarettes is currently pending in many countries. Many countries such as Brazil, Singapore, the Seychelles, Uruguay, and Norway have banned e-cigarettes. In Canada, they are technically illegal to sell, as no nicotine-containing e-fluid is approved by Health Canada, but this is generally unenforced and they are commonly available for sale Canada-wide. In the US and the UK, the use and sale to adults of e-cigarettes are legal, US, UK as of August 8, 2016, the FDA extended its regulatory power to include e-cigarettes. Under this ruling the FDA will evaluate certain issues, including ingredients, product features and health risks, as well their appeal to minors and non-users. The FDA rule also bans access to minors. A photo ID is required to buy e-cigarettes, and their sale in all ages vending machines is not permitted. In May 2016 the FDA used its authority under the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act to deem e-cigarette devices and e-liquids to be tobacco products, which meant it intended to regulate the marketing, labeling, and manufacture of devices and liquids, VP shops that mix e-liquids or make or modify devices were considered manufacturing sites that needed to register with FDA and comply with good manufacturing practice regulation. E-cigarette and tobacco companies have recruited lobbyists in an effort to prevent the FDA from evaluating e-cigarette products or banning existing products already on the market. In February 2014 the European Parliament passed regulations requiring standardization and quality control for liquids and vaporizers, disclosure of ingredients in liquids, and child-proofing and tamper-proofing for liquid packaging. In April 2014 the FDA published proposed regulations for e-cigarettes along similar lines. In the U.S. some states tax e-cigarettes as tobacco products, and some state and regional governments have broadened their indoor smoking bans to include e-cigarettes. As of October 9, 2015, at least 48 states and two territories banned e-cigarette sales to minors. E-cigarettes have been listed as drug delivery devices in several countries because they contain nicotine and their advertising has been restricted until safety and efficacy clinical trials are conclusive. Since they do not contain tobacco, television advertising in the U.S. is not restricted. Some countries have regulated e-cigarettes as a medical product even though they have not approved them as a smoking cessation aid. A 2014 review stated the emerging phenomenon of e-cigarettes has raised concerns in the health community, governments, and the general public and recommended that e-cigarettes should be regulated to protect consumers. It added, heavy regulation by restricting access to e-cigarettes would just encourage continuing use of much unhealthier tobacco smoking. A 2014 review said these products should be considered for regulation in view of the reported adverse health effects. A 2014 review said, the e-cigarette companies have been rapidly expanding using aggressive marketing messages similar to those used to promote cigarettes in the 1950s and 1960s. E-cigarettes and nicotine are regularly promoted as safe and beneficial in the media and on brand websites. While advertising of tobacco products is banned in most countries, television and radio e-cigarette advertising in some countries may be indirectly encouraging traditional cigarette smoking. There is no evidence that the cigarette brands are selling e-cigarettes as part of a plan to phase out traditional cigarettes despite some claiming to want to cooperate in harm reduction. In the U.S., six large e-cigarette businesses spent $59.3 million on promoting e-cigarettes in 2013.
easily circumvented age verification at company websites enables young people to access and be exposed to marketing for e-cigarettes. A national U.S. television advertising campaign starred Stephen Dorff exhaling a thick flume of what the ad describes as vapor, not tobacco smoke, exhorting smokers with the message we are all adults here, it's time to take our freedom back. The ads, in a context of long-standing prohibition of tobacco advertising on TV, were criticized by organizations such as Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids as undermining anti-tobacco efforts. Cynthia Hallett of Americans for Non-Smokers' Rights described the U.S. advertising campaign as attempting to re-establish a norm that smoking is okay, that smoking is glamorous and acceptable. University of Pennsylvania Communications professor Joseph Capella stated that the setting of the ad near an ocean was meant to suggest an association of clean air with the nicotine product. A 2014 review said e-cigarettes are aggressively promoted, mostly via the Internet, as a healthy alternative to smoking in the U.S. Celebrity endorsements are used to encourage e-cigarette use. Big Tobacco markets e-cigarettes to young people, with industry strategies including cartoon characters and candy flavors to sell e-cigarettes. E-cigarette companies commonly promote that their products contain only water, nicotine, glycerin, propylene glycol, and flavoring but this assertion is misleading as scientists have found differing amounts of heavy metals in the vapor, including chromium, nickel, tin, silver, cadmium, mercury, and aluminum. The assertion that e-cigarette emit only water vapor is false because the evidence indicates e-cigarette vapor contains possibly harmful chemicals such as nicotine, carbonyls, metals, and organic volatile compounds, in addition to particulates. The number of e-cigarettes sold increased every year from 2003 to 2015, when a slowdown in the growth in usage occurred in both the US and the UK. As of 2014 there were at least 466 e-cigarette brands. Worldwide e-cigarette sales in 2014 were around US$7 billion. US dollars. Approximately 30-50% of total e-cigarettes sales are handled on the Internet. As of 2015 most e-cigarette devices were made in China, mainly in Shenzhen. Chinese companies' market share of e-liquid is low. In the US, tobacco producers have a significant share of the e-cigarette market. As of 2015, 80% of all e-cigarette sales in convenience stores in the U.S. were products made by tobacco companies. According to Nielsen Holdings, convenience store e-cigarette sales in the U.S. went down for the first time during the four-week period ending on May 10, 2014. Wells Fargo analyst Bonnie Herzog attributes this decline to a shift in consumers' behavior buying more specialized devices or what she calls vapor-slash-tank-slash-mods that are not tracked by Nielsen. Wells Fargo estimated that VTMs accounted for 57% of the $3.5 billion market in the U.S. for vapor products in 2015. In 2014, the Smoke-Free Alternatives Trade Association estimated that there were 35,000 VP shops in the U.S., more than triple the number a year earlier. However the 2015 slowdown in market growth affected VTMs as well. In Canada, e-cigarettes had an estimated value of $140 million Canadian dollars in 2015. There are numerous e-cigarette retail shops in Canada. A 2014 audit of retailers in four Canadian cities found that 94% of grocery stores, convenience stores, and tobacconist shops which sold e-cigarettes sold nicotine-free varieties only, 
while all Vapi shops stocked at least one nicotine-containing product. In the UK in 2015 the most prominent brands of Seagalikes were owned by tobacco companies, however, with the exception of one model, all the tank types came from non-tobacco industry companies. Yet some tobacco industry products, while using pre-filled cartridges, resemble tank models. France's electronic cigarette market was estimated by Group Zerfi to be €130 million Euros in 2015. Additionally, France's e-liquid market was estimated at €265 million. Euros. In December 2015, there were 2,400 Vapi shops in France, 400 fewer than in March of the same year. Industry organization Fivapi said the reduction was due to consolidation, not to reduce demand. Other devices to deliver inhaled nicotine have been developed. They aim to mimic the ritual and behavioral aspects of traditional cigarettes. British American Tobacco, through their subsidiary Nico Ventures, licensed a nicotine delivery system based on existing asthma inhaler technology from UK-based healthcare company Kind Consumer. In September 2014 a product based on this named Vogue obtained approval from the United Kingdom's Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. In 2011 Philip Morris International bought the rights to a nicotine pyruvate technology developed by Jed Rose at Duke University. The technology is based on the chemical reaction between pyruvic acid and nicotine, which produces an inhalable nicotine pyruvate vapor. Passive Vapping Pax Labs has developed vaporizers that heats the leaves of tobacco to deliver nicotine in a vapor. On June 1, 2015, they introduced Juul a different type of e-cigarette which delivers 10 times as much nicotine as other e-cigarettes, equivalent to an actual cigarette puff. Blow started selling e-hookahs, an electronic version of the hookah, in 2014. Several companies including Canada's Eagle Energy Vapor are selling caffeine-based e-cigarettes instead of nicotine. Media related to electronic cigarettes at Wikimedia Commons Addiction Nicotine Yield History Society and Culture Regulation Marketing Economics Related Technologies Notes